Linda. All right. Linda. Linda. What about like this? Oh, sure. Depends on the colors. The main, the first main business meeting of the 73rd World Science Fiction Convention will be in order. Thank you, thank you, everyone. Okay, you've been through this before, so we'll go a little faster. This is the first main business meeting. Your officers remain unchanged. I am the chair, Kevin Stanley. I've been changed so much since last night. The deputy chair is Jared Dashoff, who will preside in my absence. The parliamentarian, Donald Eastlake, uh, is also responsible for running the AV and slides. Secretary, Linda Denneroff. The timekeeper, who has a lot more work to do today, is uh, Jesse Pershing. Uh, the sergeant at arms in the audience is Joyce Reynolds Ward. She and her staff are responsible for the logistics of the meeting, including getting handouts to people, collecting ballots when we get to that point, and keeping doing the people mover functions. And the videographer, Lisa Hayes, at the back of the room with her staff are doing the recordings. This meeting is being recorded, and unless we vote otherwise, the, the, anybody here can also record and photograph. These recordings will be posted to the YouTube Worldcon Events channel as quickly as possible, and if you were to search YouTube for 2015 WUSFUS Business Meeting, you would also find the five segments of yesterday's meeting already up. We were, are very grateful to DETCON 1 for the grant of additional equipment, the specialty equipment that allowed us to get these quick recordings up on, online. We will have higher resolution versions of the recordings up at a later date. And uh, because of the recording equipment's technical limitations, we will have a short technical timeout approximately every 30 minutes to allow the camera cartridges to be swapped. As with yesterday, if you are able to come to the microphone, you do need to come and speak into that so that you can be heard. That means facing the audience and the microphone, not turning to speak to us up on the head table. Although you are theoretically speaking only to the chair, that's me, you actually speak to the audience. Don't turn your back on the audience, which is the membership. If you haven't already done so, when you get a chance, note your presence on the attendance list. There are business meeting attendee ribbons back there on the set table. The secretary also has them. And if you have not already done so, silence all of your sound making devices. And if you do get a call while you are in here, uh, quickly answer it and leave the room. Do not take your calls here in the room. All right. We are now in the first main business meeting. We need to pick up where we left off yesterday. We did all of the things we had to do, but that did leave a number of things that we often do at the preliminary meeting left over until today. Today we will start with the elections for the WISFUS Mark Protection Committee. We will receive committee reports, some of which conclude motions. Some of the committees have very short, minimal reports and have asked me to just take their reports as read. They are all in the printed agenda. We will take up the resolutions. And then I expect there's a chance we, that will take us all the way up to the point where we have a scheduled uh, meeting at 11 o'clock of the Committee of the Whole to discuss uh, the Hugo-related items that were referred to it yesterday, but if not, we will uh, either then or after the Committee of the Whole, we will move into the ratification of constitutional amendments passed on from last year, and then we will pick up new constitutional amendments. Anything unfinished today, we will attempt to do tomorrow, and if we don't get it done tomorrow, it'll happen at the beginning of Sunday's meeting before the items that were proposed, sent to the Sunday meeting. I'd like to remind everyone that in general, unless you are physically unable to do so, in order to be recognized by the chair, you must stand. I will generally not call upon people who are raising their hands unless you have made arrangements for uh, uh, physical handicap reasons. And if you are, end up standing along the sides of the room or in the back of the room, I will never call on you. All right. Are there any questions on procedure? I'm going to do it again. All right. I want to remind people that if you picked up a Mark Protection Committee ballot, it is a preferential ballot that you need to mark one, two, three, four. Do not just mark X's in the boxes. 
if you mark a bunch of X's in the boxes, it spoils your ballot, it doesn't count. You need to get a fresh ballot if you do that. All right. Let me move into these committee. We are committee reports. There we go. Yeah, we're, let's go to slide eight, which is, there we go. The Mark Protection Committee reported yesterday, and nominations were taken for the Mark Protection Committee. Um, it, at this time, at the beginning of the meeting, ha it is an opportunity now to finish marking your Mark Protection Committee ballot. Again, mark that as a preferential ballot. Um, I, I, do, I don't really want to necessarily close it with people still managing to come in here. Um, can we... Yeah, let's, I, I'm going to come back to it. Let's, work, let's go ahead and go on to the next item, and we'll uh, probably close polls in a few minutes. The, uh, just a, a heads up to the sergeant at arms, when we do close the polls, I'm going to want the uh, uh, sergeants at arms to go down the aisles and collect the ballots and turn them into the tellers. Would the two tellers please stand for a moment here? Mr. Illingworth and uh, Mr. Dashoff, the elder, is the, uh, are the committee of tellers. Can I call you Junior? No. That would be so funny. I know. But speaking of Mr. Illingworth, let us... Let's see here. Oh, actually, we gave you a report yesterday. I'm sorry. The, the, the nitpicking and fly specking committee is next. They gave their committee a report yesterday. Uh, their one resolution was adopted unanimously at the very beginning of the meeting. Yeah, we'll have more. The committee will have more to do next year. And that then takes us on to item three on this, which is the Worldcon Runners Editorial Committee. Uh, Mr. Wilmoth, do you have a report? Yeah, there you go. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My name is Mike Wilmoth, and I'm the... Uh, uh, you need to... You probably... You can take the microphone out and speak into it. Thanks. Uh, my name is Mike Wilmoth, and I'm the uh, chairman of the uh, Worldcon Runner's Guide Committee. Um, because all of us were busy with Sasquatch this year, we didn't make a lot of progress. But again, we made incremental progress in updating the uh, online guide. If anybody's interested in the uh, URL, please see me uh, after the meeting. I can give that to you. But um, uh, we continue to make little progress and, uh, you know, move this forward. Very well. The business meeting chair appoints the, reappoints the members of the committee as currently constituted with the existing permission to uh, augment its membership at its discretion. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And let me see. Item four is the formulation of long list entries. Their report is in the writing and they have no additional oral report. We'll come back to their motion when we get it in the agenda. Next, number five is the YA Hugo Award Study Committee. And I believe they have a short report uh, besides their long written report. Uh, Ms. Rask, are you? Oh, there we go. Thank you. Hi, I'm Katie Rask. I was the chair of the committee this year. The committee um, was formed last year as a um, sort of second version of a previous committee. And uh, our goal was to consider the very uh, many issues that have been raised in business meetings in the past regarding a YA Hugo Award, the possibility of it, what sort of things would need to be addressed, what problems there might be, so on and so forth. Our, our goal wasn't necessarily to put forth a proposal, but to deal with some of the issues that have not been dealt with before. So we, um, the committee discussed throughout the year um, various issues on a Yahoo forum. And we came up with the following. Our report is on page 66. It's the last report in the, um, the Worldcon gigantic tome that we have gotten this year for the business meeting. So um, I, I would like to note the history of this issue very briefly. Um, this is in the first paragraph of our report. Uh, YA Hugo was first proposed, I'm told, in 1991 in Chicago. Um, however, I'm also told that uh, various other members of our organization attempted to get something together in 1989. So this is an issue that has been around for over 25 years. Um, a, a portion of our community has been trying to push this forward uh, for a quarter of a century at least. So um, the committee 
decided or addressed various things, and our findings were that, one, an award is a reasonable request, right? It, it is necessary and it is reasonable for there to be uh, a YA or a teen lit award. However, um, as you can see for number two here on page 66, um, we came to the conclusion that under the existing methodology of the Hugo Awards, we couldn't actually put together a YA award. And you'll see as we go, as we continue, that the Hugo fiction categories are defined by word count, not by age categories. Okay. So under that existing methodology, we couldn't create an award. Uh, that would be a Hugo Award. Now I want to point out that in our report we have various appendices, or we call them exhibits here, exhibit one, two, three, and four, which further detail some of the issues that we dealt with. So in exhibit one, we address some of the common concerns that have been raised in business meetings in the past about whether an award is even necessary. So you see that the first issue that is commonly raised is why have another award when YA books are already eligible? Look, Harry Potter won, right? So we have, uh, I guess you could say, a response to this. And our findings were that uh, the Hugos have not necessarily done a good job of representing YA works in the past. And you can see that in our exhibit three, we actually have a comparison between the Hugo Awards and the Newbery Awards. And in the last 50 years or whatever, um, five, something like five uh, YA speculative fiction titles have been nominated for a Hugo. And in that time, 35 or 36 uh, YA speculative fiction works have been nominated uh, for the Newberries. So that's just a comparison of the fact that there are many uh, possible uh, books out there that are high quality, that are award winning, that um, might be options for the Hugo. Um, but I'm not gonna go into detail about that. You can read that on your own. Um, the second section here addresses the issue of whether YA is a subgenre, which many people refer to it as a genre. And um, the second section explains that most people do not consider it a genre. It's considered an age category, right? Something completely different. So you can read that on your own. And number three, will anyone at Worldcon know anything about YA? And so would they be qualified to vote? And I think we actually have some really good data here, particularly that first bullet point, which is based on uh, the, the YA programming track at LUNCON. And you can see the 36 YA lit panels that were there, the number of uh, presenters, so on and so forth, right? Exhibit two, which is page 69, explains how people tend to define YA, which has always been a concern of the business meeting. And you'll note that um, for most awards, YA is not defined. Finally, in exhibit three, we have that Newberry uh, Hugo comparison. And in exhibit four, we come to the main gist, gist here, which is that the committee thinks that it has not really been able to address all of the issues that we believe that we need a second year specifically so that we can further address the issue of a um, non-Hugo award, something like a Campbell sort of award um, based on this issue with the present Hugo methodology. So we are asking the membership for a second year to continue as we are, but to take on new uh, people, anyone else who wants to be in the committee could join us. Sure. Joshua Kroningold. Um, so did you consider the possibility of targeting YA with a length category using the existing Hugo methodology? Yes, we did. And in our exhibit four, uh, we have a list of some of the questions that we would um, not just consider, but also research in more detail for the following year. And that would be whether there would be a word length limit. Um, probably 40,000 words would be a good place to start. Uh, for a, sh a shorter novel, uh, YA books can be very long, but they can also be shorter. So um, we would tend to, we would like to research in greater detail common word links uh, or, or links of books, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Matt, we just turn 
have a question. Sure. You should be a member of the committee. Yes, please don't. <laughs> please don't come to the microphone with your mouth full. <laughs> and there are three minutes left for this report. <laughs> okay. sure Apologies. Um, so, uh, just to uh, specify the question, whether there is a length category that could that is covered by the Hugos, in which that is also underrepresented and, and matches YA. Um, and that therefore one could target YA by adding an extra length category to the Hugos as a possibility, which has been raised in several forays at this point. So if I understand your question, you are asking whether we might find a particular length category that we could call YA, or that is usually YA. YA usually falls under this length category, and so therefore that would, we could sort of work that into the Hugo methodology. Uh, right. Yeah, I, I think we are getting into too low, too level, too low a level of detail at this sure. point. I'd like the committee to wind up the report if we could. Okay. Yes, that's something that we can look into in more detail in the coming year. Um, but we can also talk about that. I think there are actually some, you know, objections to that as well. So the, the chair observes that should this committee be uh, continued, he is going to continue it with its existing membership and explicitly appoint Mr. Cronengold to it. <laughs> Any other questions? Okay, thank okay. you. Dang it. Um, Mr. Olson, uh, did you intend the same thing with the type, Types and Rates Committee? Yes. Okay. Uh, the WSFIS Membership Types and Rates Committee submitted a written report. It is in your agenda and has no uh, oral report. <laughs> All right. Before we get to the resolutions, is there anyone who wishes to vote yeah. in the Mark Can Protection? Can you ask for objections to continuing the committee or something? I haven't got to the resolution. It's oh, in the resolutions. Okay. It's in the res All of the continuation motions are in the resolutions. We'll get to them in a minute. I so before we get to the various resolutions, uh, is there anybody wishing to vote in the Mark Protection Committee elections who has not voted, who has not cast their ballot? Now, you're holding up your ballots to say you have voted. Is there anybody who wants to vote who hasn't gotten a ballot? Okay. Questions? There are questions. All right. Is there somebody? I, I see one person who didn't get a ballot. Okay. We need, would the Sergeant at Arms get ballots to those people? You have very little time. I would really like to close the polls now. Hold your hand up if you did not get a ballot and you need a ballot. Hold your hand up if you need a ballot and you did not get a ballot. Okay. All right. All right then. This is a preferential ballot. You need to mark your choices. One, two, three, four. Do not just mark them with an X. Ballot. Who needed a ballot? Who needs a ballot? Mr. Wilmoth over there needs a ballot. Quickly, please. If you need a ballot, only if you need a ballot. You need a ballot over here. If you no, no. Need a ballot. All right. If we are dealt with, is there any objection to closing the polls at this time? The chair reminds the members that the way that you indicate that you do not object is to say nothing. Be if you, and, if you, and if even one person starts talking, I'm going to hear it as an objection and have to take a vote. You do yourselves no favor by being clever. Uh, without objection, the polls are now closed. The sergeants at arms will now move along the aisles. Those of you who have uh, voted, fold your ballots in half once and hand them to a sergeant at arms as they move along the aisles. It's to the end. You, so the, to the you, aisles. So, Joyce, can you grab pass the head table? Pass your ballots to the nearest aisle. And Joyce. Joyce, the head table. We have no center aisle. <laughs> 